You're most welcome back to Jiminy Esmin Turtle Nerd Channel. We are back into From the Depth and we are continuing to build the ship for Captain Scoob Rocks. So um, here is where we left off mm, last time and I'm going to spawn in the new iteration right now. So here you can see we have added the main turrets, uh, the three main turrets onto the ship. Uh, we had to shorten them off a little bit and I'm gonna fix the decos in a little bit. And we basically have the firepower here. We looked at this little turret in the last uh, episode. And if you don't know this, of course, uh, we're building this for Captain Scoobrox because Scoobrox is a captain in the army of Jimidism, aka supporter, which we are eternally thankful for. Anyways, let's load in the next little uh, version. Now, I don't know why we are underwater, but uh, as you can see, uh, we have started to build on some jet engines for this thing. So the jet engines will be just above the waterline because jet engines do not work underwater, um, as may have been seen. Uh, and they are going to provide some thrust, but they are also going to provide some engine power. Because it turns out, if you want an efficient engine, the jet engines, the custom uh, jet engines is actually one of the, your best options. Um, for efficient engines. Custom jet engines are super efficient and basically much more efficient than uh, most steam engines or uh, fuel engines for that matter. Not that the jet engines will be the main engines, but they will be an auxiliary engines and provide some really good thrust for a pretty low materials per minute. Here we have the next version of the Bal Cruiser, and as you can see, we have added a lot of armor. We have also stuck in a AI compartment and uh, gotten to work on a little auxiliary engine. So while these jet engines are efficient and they can produce uh, kind of a lot of thrust, um, well. If they get damaged, they're kind of out of the game and we'll need an auxiliary engine. So inside of here, uh, we have a injector engine. And now the injector engines, this is my, uh, I don't know what I called it, dual, d double flower or something. <laughs> I think it's really nice. Um, this little engine is very uh, efficient in terms of space. It produces a lot of power uh, in the space that uh, it has. Let's see if we can find it here. Uh, material cost it 1788 and uh, it produces a power output of, uh, well, I don't know, no really. Um, let's set it to max or something like that. Well, uh, uh, as you can see here, it provides a 15,000 uh, extra power if we need it. While this isn't material efficient, uh, it is set to the lowest priority, so it will only kick in if it uh, needs to kick in. Uh, and it's good to have a less efficient auxiliary power generating uh, feature going on there, because otherwise um, you'll be very sad. And uh, we have also worked a little bit on the armor. You can see we have backstacked ERA here if we get penetrated by some really scary stuff. We can stop them there and make them not uh, kill us very much. Uh, as well as on the side here, we are protecting the entire line of uh, our main gun turrets with the backstacked ERA. Yes, it, it kind of adds to the block count uh, quite a bit. Of course, we're already at 10,000 blocks. But um, if, we're gonna, if we're going to face uh, armor piercing EMP and stuff like that, we really need this especially in front of the AI. Here we have my uh, AOG AI uh, compartment stuck in, sticking in here. Um, yeah, and that's how we set it up so far. Let's look at the next iteration. We have been shaping up the design here. You can see the rings around the turrets. Uh, now it looks uh, pretty neat. And here I have developed this fantastic little system this is a variable thruster, secondary uh, torpedo propeller, fins, APN guidance, fuel tanks, missile interceptor. 
So uh, this is actually a new system I've made. I developed this system for uh, this ship actually. So this is uh, built for uh, Scoobrox ships and I uh, actually I built this a little bit before um, I put it onto the uh, super uh, bal carrier uh, which we made for uh, Admiral LCG Canyon. Um, and uh, I put it on there too, but it's originally built uh, for this uh, this battle cruiser. Now I'm getting um, yeah. But anyways, uh, it is both. It works in air and in water, and that's the cool thing about it. It works everywhere. Uh, so this is a system we have included into here. We just added some interior armor. You can see we're going forwards. They're set up to help turning as well. Pretty narrow compartment here, but it works. And here we have uh, we haven't implemented uh, this system yet, the amphibious uh, anti-missile or anti-torpedo missiles. Uh, but we have uh, integrated some normal ones here on the on the sides and in the front here. To kind of help a little bit with incoming big missiles as well as uh, cram barrages. So let's move on. So uh, here we can see I have added the amphibious missile system right here. Now this is an image, uh, like this is a mimic block. So there is actually a three by three uh, square going up here. I just added this corner here for it to look nice. And we have the amphibious system we just looked at right here. So they can help us taking out missiles and torpedoes. And this is of course EMP insulated. Uh, so no matter what EMP strike hits us, this thing will not be uh, smoten. Uh, here I have added some diff guns uh, as some auxiliary secondaries. Uh, however, it turned out in a later discussion that Scoob Rocks doesn't really like diff guns. So uh, these will later be replaced with crams. Uh, but we have started to work on a vertical missile. So here we have four large missiles under this little thing, which is, uh, they're now shaped charges, but they're going to be changed later because that didn't work out too well. And we have started to work on the LAM system. So here you can see we have a lot of pumps, not so much storage because the amount of pumps um, is more important than storage when it comes to uh, LAMs. So that we can shoot down incoming missiles and crams. LAMs is pretty important in, in this game, yeah. So there we have them and uh, let's move on. Uh, oh yeah, and I've started to add this little beautiful keel here, which is a main feature of the ship moving forwards. We have a pretty big keel and this is, uh, because we are using these propellers here on the sides uh, to stabilize the craft uh, as well as we're going to put some pretty cool stuff underneath here some auxiliary systems uh, since it's not very likely that those will be targeted yeah so there we have it now the ship kind of moves forward uh, we have a speed of 17 meters per second this will be improved in future iterations but this is so far we have uh, constructed it uh, at this point so let's look forward into the future and there we have it so um, as said we have uh, removed the uh, the diff guns uh, since that wasn't that wasn't really what uh, was working here uh, we have added two extra large missiles in the front and they are set up to this system here so it's actually the same the only difference is that these have, uh, has a couple of ejectors to make them uh, gain speed here we have them a little bit faster um, so they fly at a higher altitude but other than that they are the same uh, so we now have six large missiles vertical launch missiles uh, yeah, and uh, this is of course EMP insulated and we have now added the Army of Geomedism Dome Mark 1 turret. This is a very fast fire turret. Uh, it fires at a speed of 977 RPM. Now you can see here, if we just shoot a little bit, you can see that it just brrr, 
very nice, very nice, very nice. We have a vertical launcher going on there, and our three main guns, which um, our main guns, I believe they are about the same cost as the dome. Let me actually check that. I'm not completely sure. Uh, where is the dome? Dome is 30,000 materials and the uh, Type M, uh, Type N APS out the cannon is uh, 27,000. So it's uh, it's only only a difference of 3,000. This is slightly more expensive, but uh, these are actually a little bit stronger. This is great for spamming stuff. Uh, overwhelming shooting down aircraft and all that jazz yeah so let's move on to the next little iteration i don't think there is anything we have been missing uh, we have added um, propellers facing upward as well as hydrofoils uh, keeping us floating and stable so we're controlling pitch and roll with some hydrofoils here yep now we are uh, catching up a little bit um, these are still the diff guns, but they will be replaced momentarily. But we added some slots for where some of the auxiliary uh, weapons will be located. Uh, here we also have another little weapon system that will add. This is, if I don't remember incorrectly, the Type A, Class A, uh, AA Cram uh, cannon. So this is an anti-air cram cannon with laser targeter exploding uh, pretty close to the enemies, um, doing great damage towards uh, airships and um, uh, well, planes and of course ships uh, if they don't have any LAM systems that can shoot them down. Uh, these cram shells we have th these ones they're pretty weak, so they will be easily shot down, but they deal some good damage. So we added some cool features around the back here, added some deck, uh, I don't know if we added this last time, but you can see here, looking pretty neat, I think. And yeah, smoothing out some shapes, and there we go, so let's look at the next little version. So the next version is coming in at 440,000 materials. Uh, so we are closing in on the budget. The end budget will be, uh, as you may remember, ish uh, 600,000, 700,000, something like that. So uh, here we have we have added the dome. No, 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 no. This is the dome. We have added the elite um, bronze cram cannon. Um, as we talked a little bit about before, uh, Captain Scoobrox prefers uh, cram cannons uh, in front of diff cannons. He's not a fan of the diff cannons. So these are some brass cram cannons. Uh, they're pretty strong for their size. They're obviously very small, but they are kind of integrated into the um, exterior armor here, basically. They, 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 they take very small space, but they still provide a good punch. We have also built a couple of mortars, two mortars that are going to be stuck into here, kind of ish hidden uh, into the system to provide us with some extra um, over the top, no, <laughs> over the counter, no, over the table, yes, uh, because the table of the ship is, you know, this is, th the deck is the table, you know. That's what they say. In any ways, uh, they will come from above and strike below and uh, potentially deal some damage. So that's nice. Anyways, I'm very happy with this brass uh, cram cannon. I'm going to use it on uh, as an auxiliary cannon on almost every future ship I build, probably. So this is uh, yet another thing we built for this ship. That's uh, really good. Here we have a little detection tower. We are probably going to use this thing or not. We'll see. Um, as part of the detection. In any case, what have we added here? We have added on the deck armor a little bit, so it's one meter of metal backed up with a pole of uh, alloy. So we are obviously not set up to deal with super heavy strikes from above, but we're going to spend a lot on having a really good LAM system, so hopefully we don't need to bother with that about that lamp system we have the nodes going out here you can see they are uh, emp insulated uh, as there is a rubber surrounding these so they want to be emp fried 
we have some nodes connecting up to the fronts here so we have some really different areas where we can take some EP damage really handy very very handy as the ship is moving forwards uh, quite literally jumping up and down because we just plopped it into water you can see we have worked on some interesting design features here uh, we did that last time of course uh, in the earlier iteration but we added railing around it and we added some really interesting gold uh, shapes going on here make it it have a interesting diesel punk steampunk combo that the uh, captain scoop rocks was looking for we also added railing around this and these are of course also mimics because otherwise uh, they would get into trouble this is by the way the um, a kind of new-ish little anti-missile missile turret I made and these are really good because uh, they are set up to shoot at the thing this turret is aiming for so they have a much larger hit rate than the vertical launch systems uh, have so I like them a lot they're super cool and we're going to have this as uh, extra anti-missile missile and anti-crime defenses of course we added up some uh, armor here, uh, putting through some of this uh, smoke from uh, or exhaust from the fuel engine. We have integrated the cram cannons there, and we have also added a flak sea whiz. So uh, Scuba Rocks basically wanted it to have some auxiliary sea whiz systems uh, along with the lambs, and this is one of them. This is a, a flak cannon which I've used on numerous occasions, uh, among others. Um, we use it for the uh, Super Bowl Carrier, uh, and it's really efficient. It just throws out uh, flaks, kind of small ones, but really quickly, and we can really deal with clusters of incoming projectiles. We of course need ladders if anyone gets into the water and needs to climb up. Yeah, so we've started to work a little bit on the superstructure here. We're going to go on top of here and build a little deck upon a deck upon a deck thing. Making it look pretty cool. As you can see right here. So here we are built on the first little deck thing here. We are of course going to use this platform to host a lot of lambs. So we added lambs to the side here. And to the front, to the front, and to the uh, barboard side. Uh, since we are not expecting to reach a lot, uh, get a lot of firepower coming from this direction, we'll still need something here in case the enemy is a flyer, goes on top of us, and shoots something scary. So that's kind of needed. In any case, we have shaped out this thing, and uh, well. We have our nice lamb nodes there. Uh, we installed these um, AA cram turrets basically in the sides here. And I think they look pretty nice integrated there. Um, hopefully Scoobrox thinks so as well. We do want to make our captain happy since uh, Captain Scoobrox is a very, very generous supporter of our channel. Uh, we have added a couple of fins here going on too. And uh, of course, interior propellers there. Uh, we have speeded up the thing a little bit, actually. Uh, it's not noticeable yet, by the way, but we have added that. Um, here you can see we have actually, this is actually a detection turret with a radar, an IR camera, a normal camera, and we have a, a tracker system here. So we have some, uh, some accuracy going on there in the front. Uh, here we have started to integrate some shield projectors. These are online all the time because we don't have, uh, we didn't set up the AI uh, to control that yet. But that's basically that. And uh, now comes more engines. Uh, this cram, uh, no, this LAM system here, this LAM node you saw before, uh, I have EMP insulated that. So even if we get a super heavy EMP strike, our entire LAM system doesn't go down. So this uh, lasers here, they are not uh, protected from EMP damage, so these can be destroyed by, uh, by some EMP. But this part of the system is completely insulated against the EMP, uh, which means that this won't be destroyed by EMP at all. So no matter how much EMP we get hit with, 
the EMP itself will not make it so that our entire uh, LAM system is offline but you, because you can remember that these EMP these uh, LAM nodes are EMP secure and to save some space we could unfortunately not these ones be as EMP secure we of course have surge protectors but you really really need to insulate stuff with rubber too so that ha that's how that works um, here we have included uh, one of my steamed porks a really good quite efficient um, steam engine which can provide us a lot of power so since we're going to have a pretty heavy shielding system and lamp system we really need very much uh, auxiliary power like all over the place to make sure that it's not uh, we're not getting shot down another little shield projector going on here um, we can move across it here we have added some smoke dispensers too to protect uh, against the lasers and uh, right here we have uh, some auxiliary engines so i really wanted to make it go a little bit faster so i've added a steam engine here that only provides thrust so we have some propellers here providing thrust and we have some auxiliary engines providing uh, engine power because we don't want it in any way shape or form to be able to uh, we don't want the enemy to take out all our engine power at once because this ship is really really compact it doesn't have a lot of floating capability so it kind of half sinks um, if we kind of uh, basically make this thing offline completely you can see that right now it is uh, it is like too heavy. So if we turn it off, if we don't have any uh, engine power, we will sink a little bit and some of the weapons will have a hard time shooting. Uh, it has uh, tilting issues um, and stuff like that because we want to build it really compact. We want to make it sure that this ship is still fast. We're not relying on bulk on only for this design. Uh, we are more relying on speed and efficiency and stuff like that. So that means we need to make sure that our engines are super, super, super um, spread out in a way. Uh, what is it called? It's not spread out. It's uh, We want to make sure we are very redundant. We are aiming for a super redundant design. So that's why we have some engines down here. Two. Uh, as well as this area is very unlikely to uh, get targeted so that's pretty cool too yeah so that's this iteration and now we have the next iteration of this design which will be the last one for this episode so we're going to go through what have been added here we have added some uh, uh, some rudders in the front I have added a kinetic diff gun seawiz system that aims and shoots down incoming torpedoes because after some discussions and after some talks with uh, scuba rocks it became apparent that our captain had some great problems uh, at building a ship that was able to withstand and take out the stronghold so from this iteration and forwards this ship is especially adapted and tuned and honed into especially being safe from and taking out the stronghold and the stronghold is a ship from the um, what is it called the over overwatch or oh, onyx watch <laughs> yeah it's an onyx uh, watch ship and it has some really scary cram barrages some really scary torpedoes that are really hard to shoot down and some very very scary uh, missiles it's it's a very scary ship and um Scoobrox basically said can you make my ship take that out and i was like man we can we can check here actually i don't know if this iteration is able to take it out but we can spawn it here basically onyx watch ships stronghold it's 1.4 millions. Yep, yep. Uh, so it's it's a very big it's a very big ship, you know. 
Um, and I was like, man, I can't promise uh, this ship to be able to take out that thing because the um, the stronghold has a cost of basically like 1.4 million and the end cost for uh, this ship, this large ship for uh, the captain rank uh, is supposed to be somewhere around uh, like 700k I was thinking, at least under the million was, uh, was the plan. So I was like, I can promise uh, we can take it out. But uh, I said like, we can do it, tr we, we, we can try, we can try. So basically, um, from this iteration and forwards, I have been trying to make this ship be able to withstand the stronghold's super scary uh, weaponry. And if we are, ma if we manage to make this ship survive and beat the stronghold with only half the material cost, I will call this little build a huge success. We may not be able to do that, but we shall indeed try, of course. And um, you can see that this little kinetic seaway system going on down there, it is of course there to uh, help and shoot these incoming torpedoes. You can see these torpedoes coming in here. We have our anti-missile missiles and well, we didn't get, <laughs> we couldn't shoot it in time. Uh, we probably shot it some time before, but you can see these missiles are absolutely scary. Um, no matter the armor you have, now you can see the armor scheme, a really good cut through. You know, even though this torpedo hit, thanks to our pretty, pretty well set up armor, if I can say so myself, didn't cause any uh, fatal injuries to the ship, this is a huge hull. And we can only take like that many hits like this before our 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 health is like below below what we can handle. Yeah, well in any case, uh, we have our VLM still, we have our targeting system, and we have started to add on another floor here. Uh, this is the uh, Vigoletta Marksman uh, Five, uh, I think it's. Uh, it's a it's a turret I made that I think is really 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 efficient So I just wanted to have a one of these turrets onto this ship just for some efficiency just to make it a lot better So we added it here now. It's a little bit sad to look at this uh, so beat up um, We're gonna do proper battle testings in future videos, but right now we're just looking at this iteration and that's the last one for this episode here we have the um, the uh, what is it called the seaway system. It's uh, some flax going on there. You can see that our lambs are able to shoot down a lot of the crab. And one thing I did set up, I did set up the lambs to also shoot a little bit at uh, very close torpedoes as well. So if the torpedoes really get close, the lambs will try to target them as well. It's not the most efficient way to use lambs because the water kind of makes them a lot weaker. But these torpedoes are so scary that I set up the lambs to uh, deal with them if need be as well. Well, we have a lot of things to fix and a lot of things to add and uh, a, a journey in front of us. But I hope you enjoyed this episode of building this beautiful ship for Captain Scooby Rocks. And if you also want to support the channel and become a commanding officer in the Army of Gymnasium, check my links in the description. Um, well, that's Patreon to be specific. But if you want to support the channel in any way, please look at gymnasium.com support and you will have the different options there. We're coming back next week with the next little building session of this uh, battle uh, cruiser and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make it uh, kill and slash survive the stronghold even though the stronghold has twice the material count. So thanks a lot for watching. This is your host Jim Edesim, and we're signing out.